Today we'll discuss what the PHQ-9 is, how it works, and how you can use it effectively in your clinical practice. This is an essential tool for identifying and managing depression in diverse clinical settings. The Patient Health Questionnaire 9, or PHQ-9, is a tool to screen for depression. It can function as a screening tool, aids in diagnosis, and measures treatment response. It is based on a DSM-5 criteria for major depressive disorder, providing a structured and straightforward approach to evaluating patients' mental health. It should be performed to all patients at least once per year. For patients with suspected or has known depression, it can be given at each appointment. In PHQ-9, the nine refers to the nine questions that reviews nine key symptoms of depression based on a DSM diagnostic criteria for major depression. For each question, which is really presented as a statement, patients are asked how often they have experienced that specific feeling or situation in the past two weeks. Possible answers include not at all, several days, more than half the days, or nearly every day. The question one is about decreased enjoyment in things. It asks if the patient has little interest or pleasure in doing things. This question assesses anhedonia, a core symptom of depression. Anhedonia refers to a diminished interest in or inability to experience pleasure from activities that are typically enjoyable, such as hobbies, social interactions, or favorite pastimes. Question two is feeling down or hopeless. This question captures the emotional component of depression, such as feelings of sadness, emptiness, or hopelessness. Persistent feelings of despair can indicate a depressive mood disorder and often contribute to other symptoms. Question three is about sleep problems. This question examines sleep disturbances, which are common in depression. It can manifest as insomnia, which is difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, or hypersomnia, which is excessive sleeping or difficulty staying awake during the day. Question four explores low energy. This question assesses fatigue, a hallmark symptom of depression. Persistent tiredness or a lack of energy often interferes with daily functioning and can occur regardless of physical activity levels. Question five explores changes in appetite. This question evaluates appetite changes which can vary among patients with depression. Loss of appetite leads to unintentional weight loss. Increased appetite or emotional eating results in weight gain. Question six is feeling like a failure. This question addresses feelings of guilt and worthlessness, a common cognitive symptoms of depression. Patients may have exaggerated sense of failure, low self-esteem, or believe they are a burden to others. Question seven involves problem concentrating. This question evaluates concentration and cognitive difficulties often referred to as brain fog. These issues can impair daily activities, work, or academic performance, and may exacerbate feelings of frustration or inadequacy. Question eight involves feeling restless or moving more slowly than usual. This question looks for psychomotor changes which can manifest either as psychomotor retardation or psychomotor agitation. Psychomotor retardation defined as slowed speech, movement, or thought process, compared to psychomotor agitation, which involves restlessness, fidgeting, or an inability to sit still. Both are physical manifestations of depression that others may notice. And question nine is suicidal or self-harm thoughts. This is the most critical question assessing suicidal ideation or self-harm. A positive response indicates an urgent need for follow-up to assess risk and ensure the patient's safety. It requires immediate intervention and may necessitate psychiatric evaluation or emergency care. Each question is scored from zero to three, none at all receiving a score of zero and nearly every day receiving a score of three. 
The PHQ-9 test also includes a 10th question, but is not part of the total score. It is answered if any of the previous nine questions reveal that depression may exist. This final question asks how hard is it for patients to work, take care of things at home, or get along with others. The question asks the degree to which the symptoms have interfered with daily life, ranging from not difficulty at all, somewhat difficult, very difficult, and extremely difficult. This question helps us to understand how well or how poorly the patient has been coping with the symptoms. The PHQ-9 score ranged from minimal to severe. A score of 0 to 4 indicates no or minimal depression. A score of 5 to 9 suggests mild depression. A score of 10 to 14 suggests moderate depression, whereas a score of 15 to 19 indicates moderately severe depression. And a score of more than 20 indicates severe depression. The highest score is 27. If question nine, the one that addresses self-harm suicide, if it's a positive answer, providers are expected to explore this issue further. If the patient is receiving treatment for depression, including therapy and medications, regular PHQ-9 is a good tool to monitor progress and make sure that the treatment is effective. When screening is positive for possible depression, the diagnosis should be confirmed using DSM-5 criteria. In conclusion, the PHQ-9 questionnaire is a valuable, evidence-based tool for depression screening that is simple to administer, highly effective in identifying depressive symptoms, and guiding treatment decisions. Thank you.